Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, again, we're getting back into the swing of things after spring break, and so today we're gonna make something fun that's kind of a craft, um, a little less artsy, a little more crafty, um, but it's gonna be really fun and they're really cool. Today we are going to be making a whirly gig, or you call it a whirly bird, or a spinner, but I like whirly gig because I think that sounds fun. And we kind of need a random amount of, a random array of supplies today. So I'm going to go through all the things that we're going to need and then I'll explain to you what we're going to be making. So first things first, we always need a pencil. Today you're also going to need some scissors and glue. I would recommend a glue stick for this, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to use um, liquid glue. You're going to need some thread or yarn. A little bit thicker yarn is definitely more recommended, so this is the only thing that I could find in my house, but this is what I got. Um, you'll need a skewer, something pointy, a toothpick would work. Um, really, your adult is going to help you with this part anyways. And then you'll need one thicker uh, kind of paper. You could use cardboard if you've been, you know, ordering anything from Amazon. You could use cardboard for this. That would be perfect. And then one or two sheets of white paper that you're going to glue on either side of the cardboard. And then I have my markers here so that I can decorate my whirly gig as well. So it's a lot of random supplies. It's down in the description if you don't remember them all. And then I also have some materials of circles to trace. If you don't want to try and um, create your own circle, it can be really difficult. I got my own circles uh, to trace onto my paper. So you ready? Okay, here we go. A whirly gig can be really cool, and I'm actually going to do a rainbow on one side of my whirly gig um, so that we can see it when it spins. We can see the rainbow form and see how the colors kind of blend into one another um, and how they mix and things like that. So this can be really cool to look at different colors and how they interact with one another, and it also is just kind of a fun way to spend your afternoon. So once you have all these materials, you're going to want to start with your circle tracers and your papers that you're going to turn into your circle and your cardboard and your pencil. You ready? Let's get this going. Getting started. So I've already cut out one of my circles out of my thick, this is like a card stock, really thick paper um, that I got in some packaging and I just really liked the color of it. So um, I cut it out from the other side using that circle. And then to cover up this weird stuff on the other side, I'm gonna cut out a white circle and trace this. Now that I've got my two circles, I'm gonna glue them together. And again, if you are using a piece of cardboard and you wanna glue white paper to both sides, you absolutely can to make it look a little bit nicer. And if you remember from another video, we did our collagraph rubbing. If you haven't checked that one out, make sure that you do. Um, we wanna burnish, so we're gonna rub on both sides to make sure the glue gets everywhere. Okay, awesome. And then this is the part that you're gonna need an adult to help you with. So you are gonna need an adult to help you poke two holes in the center of your um, whirly gig. So that's why I have the skewer out to poke holes. Um, it'll definitely be easier if you have cardboard. I think it's gonna be tougher since I have cardstock. Um, since you're using kind of a sharp tipped object, ask an adult to help you out with this one. So I'm just gonna make two little dots in the middle, not too far away from each other, but just kind of like that, as much in the middle as I can. And then I'm gonna poke the holes through carefully. Okay, so I ended up poking three holes because um, I didn't like this one. I wanted one, to, I wanted them to be a little bit more centered, so I ended up poking three, but I'm only gonna use the two on the outside. So now what you can do is you can decorate your whirly gig however you want, and you're gonna be thinking, this thing is gonna be spinning back and forth really, really fast, so what kind of design can you create that's gonna be really interesting um, as it's moving? moving? We're really thinking about the uh, principle of design of movement with this piece because it's not something that's just gonna be stuck on a wall somewhere, but something that you have to move to create an image. So think about what can be interesting. You can decorate both sides, you can just decorate one side, and then I will show you how to make it spin. So go ahead and decorate, um, or maybe I should wait for my glue to dry a little bit, and then I'll decorate, um, and we'll come back together. Okay. 
Okay, so now I've got my whirly gig drawn on. So I decided to do like a rainbow on this side to see if I could see the colors mixing together. And on this side, I decided to try maybe some like animation, like um, an old fashioned Zoe trope. Um, I'll put here what a Zoe trope is, um, but it's basically this very, um, original part of the filmmaking process that was this little disc and you would make these slides that sit in it and then you would spin it um, and as it spun your eyes would think that you're seeing a moving picture because the picture is moving and you're just looking in one place so I'm trying to kind of resemble that here but I have no idea if it's gonna work or not I think my colors will show up though so now I need to move on to the yarn part so I have this yarn I'm gonna measure out about an arm's length so from fingertip to fingertip is about how much I want and then I'm gonna cut it there and then this part might be a little bit tricky I think I'm gonna use my skewer to help me out um, we need to poke it through so that we kind of are making a loop through our um, whirly gig here we go okay now I've got a loop on one side and two loose ends on the other side, so it's really simple. All I'm gonna do is tie a knot um, in between in, with these two ends. So I'm gonna loop it up, and I like to create an, uh, another loop, and I make an X and go through. All right, now we've got our whirly gig. So here's what. You so I know in the instructions I said to use an arm's length of yarn, but I was testing it out and I found that that was just way too long. So I actually ended up cutting it and I made it a whole lot shorter. So to use this, you need to make sure your strings stay pretty centered in the middle. Um, this can be a little bit tricky and I think that this would be easier if I had done it with a thicker piece of cardboard. So if you're using cardboard, snaps to you. So it's probably gonna be a lot easier. And I just have it around my hand and I'm spinning my thread my yarn I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side spin 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 until it's really spun up and really tight I'm gonna make sure that it's centered my yarn is like centered here and then I can hear the side's cooler and then I can pull my hands back and it will spin here we go Kind of spin back and forth. Oh, so cool. And then you can do it again and again um, as many times as you want. You can keep recreating these um, and doing lots of different kinds of whirly gigs. I would love to see uh, what you're creating. Remember that you can submit to the virtual art show um, at the website that's linked down below in the description. Um, I'll be uploading stuff as soon as I'm getting it. I'm gonna spin mine again because it's fun. Oh wait. There you go. Well, that spin didn't work as well. But if you have any tips or tricks to make this a little bit smoother, a little bit easier, holla at me. Let me know what's you, what you've got on your mind. Um, I can't wait to see you again. I miss you guys so much. Have an awesome day. Bye.